Hey guys and welcome back, it's Laura here again. Today I'm going to talk to you about one of the most remarkable LGBTQIA artists, Claude Cahun. She was a French surrealist photographer, sculptor, writer and political activist. She used a wide variety of means of expression to convey her obsession for the themes of identity and self-image. Born in France, 1894, Lucy Schwab, better known as Claude Cahun, was a gender non-conforming artist and writer. Cahun was born in a middle-class family in Nantes and had a privileged upbringing and allowed her to explore her artistic interests. Cahun's mother suffered from acute mental illness to such a degree that she was institutionalised and Cahun was brought up mainly by her blind grandmother, due in part to her mother's illness and also to an anti-Semitic incident at school in France. Cahun was sent to boarding school in Surrey, England for a short period. As a teenager, Cahun suffered from anorexia, suicidal thoughts and some bouts of debilitating depression as their mother. In 1909, she returned to Nantes and met Suzanne Malherb, who would eventually become not only her stepsister, but also her lifelong companion and collaborator. Cahun later described this meeting as a thunderbolt encounter, and their friendship became one of the key formational factors in Cahun's life and art. They moved to Paris around 1919 when Dada was at its height and where he adopted the gender neutral names Claude Cahun and Marcel Moore. Throughout her life, Cahun created a diverse body of work that explores identity, gender and politics. Though she was heavily influenced by the surrealists and their experimentation with the subconscious mind, for Cahun and Moore, though their adoption of new names was not about changing gender, but about escaping such oppositional constructed ties altogether. In the 1920s, Cahun began to incorporate surrealist techniques into her work creating dreamlike images and questioned reality and explored the psyche. Working in Paris in the 1920s and 30s alongside surrealist artists and writers, long before the rise of gender-neutral they as a pronoun and the advent of terms like transgender and queer theory, Cahun created stark, sometimes playful, but deliberately equivocal photos of herself. And an example is Cahun's photograph, Que me veux-tu? What Do You Want From Me? is a powerful and striking image that reflects key themes in Cahoon's artistic work. The photograph depicts Cahoon in a boldly androgynous pose. Her body is half turned towards the viewer. The background is cloudy and, and indistinct with a hazy light suggesting a dreamlike or otherworldly atmosphere. One of the key themes in Cahoon's work was the exploration of gender identity and the construction of gender roles through performance and subversion. In this photograph, she defies traditional gender norms by presenting herself as a gender ambiguous figure, challenging the viewer to question their assumptions about what a woman or a man should look like. The title of the piece also adds to this sense of defiance, as Cahoon challenges the viewer to confront their expectations and desires for her. The haze and the ambiguity of the background further emphasises the sense of ambiguity and multiple layers of meaning. Overall, Kema Virtu is a powerful and thought-provoking piece of art that challenges traditional gender norms. Masculine, feminine, she wrote in her book, Ave Non Avenue, published in English as Disavowals. It depends on the situation. Nature is the only gender that always suits me. What's specifically remarkable about Cahoon's work is that it was created at a time when homosexuality, transgenderism, and other forms of non-confirming gender expression were still stigmatized and often illegal. As a result, Cahoon's art was often produced in secret and was largely unknown to the public during her lifetime. In 1929, Cahoon met Breton at a party in Paris. They quickly began a close friendship and collaboration. Cahoon was already an established artist and writer, known for her experimental work and her dedication to radical politics and feminism. Breton, as the leader of the Surrealist movement, was drawn to Cahoon's innovative approach and her commitment to the Surrealist ideals of freedom and revolution. Cahoon and Breton worked together on a number of projects, including a book entitled Les Paris Son Ouvert, The Dice Are Cast, which she co-wrote and co-illustrated. The book was a classic example of a surrealist collaboration featuring enigmatic images and poetic texts that challenge traditional notions of authorship and meaning. In addition, her collaborations with Breton, Cahun also became involved with the International de l'Artiste Révolutionnaire Independent, International Union of Independent Revolutionary Artists founded by Breton, Diego Rivera and Leon Trotsky, a leftist artist group 
that was committed to using art as a tool for political and social change. Cahoon was drawn to the group's radical ideas and their commitment to using art to challenge oppressive social norms and structures. Through her work with Breton and the International Union of Independent Revolutionary Artists, Cahoon helped to shape the surrealist movement and to push the boundaries of art and politics in new and innovative ways. Her contributions to the movement continue to inspire artists and activists today. However, Cahoon's relationship with the Surrealist movement was complex. While she was greatly influenced by the movement's techniques and ideas, she often found it to be limiting in its gender politics. She felt that the predominantly male artists of the movement often perpetuated traditional gender norms and stereotypes which went against her own vision of gender and identity. One of her most famous pieces, I Extend My Arms, is a fascinating and complex walk by Claude Cahoon, and it reveals many of the themes, motifs that were central to her artistic and political projects. The poem begins with the line, I extend my arms as if in the water, evoking a sense of fluidity and movement that marks much of Cahoon's work. This image of extending one's arms suggests both vulnerability and openness, as if the speaker is inviting the world in while also exposing herself to its dangers. The poem then goes on to describe the shift in perspectives and identities of the speaker as she moves from the I am me to I am you to I am an old man and so on. The sense of fluidity and multiplicity is a key theme in Cahoon's work as she was committed to challenging traditional notions of fixed identity and gender norms. The final lines of the poem are perhaps the most provocative and enigmatic. As the speaker declares, I am the truth, I am the lie, I am the good, I am the evil. Here Cahoon is playing with the idea of truth and morality, suggesting that these concepts are constantly shifting and unstable. It is also worth noting that Cahoon uses the same word je, French for is, to describe both the truth and the lie, collapsing the binary oppositions between them. I Extend My Arms reveals Cahoon's commitment to fluidity, multiplicity and radical self-invention. Through her use of metaphor and image, she challenges the traditional notions of fixed identity and morality, suggesting instead that these concepts are constantly shifting and evolving. It's a powerful and thought-provoking work that continues to resonate with audiences today. She uses her own image to challenge gender norms and presents herself as someone who was unclassifiable. As war broke out, Moore and Cahoon fled Paris, increasing anti-Semitism for the island of Jersey. There, they distributed anti-Nazi propaganda to German soldiers, risking their lives. Reverting to their original names, Lucy Schwab and Suzanne Malherb, they declared themselves sisters and continued their political efforts from Jersey. In 1944, they were arrested and sentenced to death. Thankfully, Jersey was liberated a year later. However, the two returned home to find their house and property confiscated and the majority of their work destroyed. In 1951, Cahoon was awarded the Medal of French Gratitude for being part of the resistance. Cahoon died in 1954 after struggling with poor health for some time, probably compounded by the time spent in prison. Cahoon's work was trailblazing and highly ahead of its time, yet it went unnoticed by the mainstream art world. It wasn't until the 1970s, nearly 30 years after her death, that her work was rediscovered thanks to feminist scholars who were interested in uncovering the history of women in art. Cahoon's art and life continued to inspire contemporary generations of artists and activists who fight for gender and sexual diversity. She has influenced countless queer and gender-provoking artists such as Cindy Sherman, Nan Golden and Gillian Waring. Thank you for joining me today in celebrating the life and work of Claude Cahoon. Until next time, remember to support LGBTQIA artists and to keep pushing the boundaries of what is considered acceptable in art and in life. Please let me know in the comments below what you thought about this video and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon for more videos like this. See you on the next one. Bye!